I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic and stroke survivor and a slow learner. <laughs> this is take two again. I know. And you know what? Yesterday I did take two and you may have noticed I had my earphones in. So the sound was going through the ear, the AirPods and I, what a mess. Anyway, we're doing take two now because I didn't turn on my mic. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm getting ready to turn 50 this year. So maybe, um, maybe podcasting isn't, <laughs> isn't, isn't my jam. Uh, we'll see. So, uh, I'll tell you what is my jam. I made some, uh, or my soup. <laughs> I, uh, I made some Persian noodle soup today. It's my first legitimate Persian uh, uh, dish. And it was freaking amazing. And there's a big vat of it. I think it serves 12 people. So I said, oh, well, let's, um, maybe I can just package some up and give it to this person or that person. And my husband was like, uh, no, uh, uh, no, we're, we're just going to eat this. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So he loves it. And that is so flattering because he grew up eating this stuff. So good job. Good job. Um, okay. So I am going, hopefully I will do as good a job with this uh, take two as I did for take one because I did it. I did a good job. Dag on it. Okay. So the writing prompt for today, we have two more days left today and tomorrow for your serenity prayer daily reflection. Your writing prompt is write about a goal and how the serenity prayer might help you pursue it. And today's focus is on practicing step 10 spot checks. Now, I am going to be applying this idea to stroke recovery and vestibular therapy. But I will be talking about how it applies to sobriety as well. So this is for all of you people out there. And I, as you know, um, am the lucky winner of all three of these um, <laughs> silent, uh, or not silent, is it silent? Invisible, invisible illnesses. And um, I really have found over the past two days, as every AA meeting that I have gone to has been focused on step 10. I'm like, okay, obviously I'm supposed to talk about step 10 today. And um, I thought, wow, this really applies very nicely to my experience with vestibular therapy on Thursday and what she asked, what my therapist asked me to do. So I'm going to talk a bit about that. And for those of you who are not familiar with step 10, this is, um, this is a part of the 12 step program of AA. And for me, it has been an invaluable tool for self awareness and course correction throughout the day, particularly when I was working. Um, it is, it involves taking a brief moment to assess our thoughts and feelings and behaviors at various points of the day. So I have this little prayer card thing um, that I use before I go to bed. And I read it. I've talked about it a lot. Um, I read it before I go to bed every night. Well, I don't now because I'll talk about that. Uh, I don't, I don't read, uh, a lot now, but because of my eyes, but anyway, I pretty much have it memorized, but what it does is, is it says, um, have I been resentful, angry, uh, scared, any of these things is there. So it's, 
it's having me look at my interactions with people throughout the day and identify like, did I treat everybody the way that is aligned with my sobriety program? Am I on the right path um, as a whole? Is there something that I need to go back and address with someone? And this ongoing personal inventory helps recovering alcoholics to stay on the beam, as they say, and ensure that, again, they're aligned with their sobriety program and their own personal growth. The stuff that they talk with their sponsors about, the stuff that we learn in meetings, the stuff that we learn in the big book. So that little prayer card that I have is before I go to bed, but as I, the longer I have stayed sober, the more I've been able to make these step 10 spot checks a daily habit. So I mentioned last week, I think, about how my Apple Watch was a great way to start learning how to pause. And over time, it started to become a habit. I I started to think, oh, I wonder when my watch is going to go off, you know? Um, And a lot of times I was in the bathroom, which was my favorite place to pause (laughs) for 60 seconds and breathe. But um, over time, that pause made me, instead of thinking about what was going on that I needed to address in the future, I started to be able to think back over the past four hours, like, is there anything I need to address? Is there anything, did I, you know, did I act aligned with my values? with everybody that I talk to. And what's cool is that if there's anything that you need to address, if you think about, well, you know, I wonder if I may have, what I said may have come across wrong to this person, then you're still in the same, you know, daylight that you can go back and say something. And it's a heck of a lot easier to address something in real time, you know, um, moments after it happened or, or just a few hours after it happened, then to have to wait to put it off. And the longer you put something off, the longer you want to put something off. And um, in the evenings, when I would review this little prayer card, I would sometimes go back and, you know, text somebody or call somebody and be like, I, you know, I just wanted to check in and say that I hope that, that I came across as I intended in our conversation earlier today. I intended to say, and I would explain in a little more detail how I intended to come across. And there has been at least one time that I reached out to somebody and they thanked me because, in fact, they were feeling the way that I had feared I had made them feel. So um, it really has been such a nice way for me to um, become a bit more peaceful, especially before I go to bed. So incorporating this step 10 into your daily routine can can even begin right when you wake up in the morning. Um, I remember when I first got sober, I, I would wake up and I'm like, you know, I open my eyes and then, oh yeah, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> That's what would happen for real. <laughs> and then over time, you know, that's why I really like now going to this 
7 a.m. meeting because although I don't have that same reaction to being an alcoholic every morning, I do happen to have that reaction now as, um, as a stroke survivor, unfortunately, but it's, it's the true. Um, I wake up and when I first had to leave my job nine months ago, I started waking up and I'd wake up and then I'd be like, oh, right, I don't have a job or, oh yeah, I'm going to have a headache today or I have a headache. Like as soon as blood starts flowing, the head started hurting. And, um, oh yeah, I can't use my eyes. Like all of that would like hit me when I woke up. So going to my morning sobriety meeting became a way for me to snap out of that, you know, to, to realign right in the beginning of the day. And, um, and so in the same way you can do that morning spot check and, and just open your eyes. And, and if you happen to have that kind of a feeling when you open your eyes, like something kind of drags you down, think, am I starting the day that I starting the day, the way that I want to, um, how can I turn this around? How can I, what is something today that I have ahead of me that I can look forward to? And that really started working for me, but it took time. It took time. Um, and then as the day unfolds, this step 10, uh, spot check becomes a touchstone throughout the day. Um, so taking a minute here and there to reflect keeps you grounded, you know, reminds you of where you're standing. I can, I can so easily just be floating off in, you know, my brain is just somewhere else dealing with the world, like the entire world over here. Like, I feel like I'm running the world over here. And this spot check just brings me right back to where I'm standing and gets me centered and gets me feeling like, you know, is there uh, anything that I can let go of right now? So before bed, the the more thorough step 10 provides an opportunity to close that loop for the day and allows for um, reconciling any unresolved issues and for me sets me up for a very peaceful night. I'm not waking up in the middle of the night and being like, you know, oh, I hope this person didn't think I meant this, you know, and then I gotta, I, then I can't sleep the rest of the night because I have to remember to address something the next day. I try to really close the loop on the day. And then when I'm laying down and I start my calm app, I really am thinking that's the goal. I'm thinking of nothing but what I'm hearing Tamara Levitt say on the call map. So, um, it really is a, a great way for me to just breathe. I mean, <laughs> I, I think about if I like, let's see, 10 years ago, if, if somebody were to say in 10 years, when you go to bed, you're going to be think you're going to be listening to a calm app, a calm meditation app. And you're going to be taking deep breaths, three or four deep breaths. And then you're just going to listen and you're just going to, nothing is going to be bothering you. You're going to be thinking about how comfortable this pillow is under your head and how adorable your sweet little dogs are all nestled in their crates, um, all quiet and going to bed. I wouldn't believe you. I wouldn't have believed you ten, that I have this like Brady Bunch nighttime <laughs> routine. That's what it reminds me of. Okay. Anyway, um, so the true power of this step 10 spot check is the pause. 
that it requires. It is a conscious break from being on autopilot. And for a recovering alcoholic, these pauses are just, I mean, so valuable in course correction and making amends in between uh, sunrise and sunset, you know, the day that something happens, that makes it so much easier. And the shorter amount of time that we have to hold on to something as an alcoholic, the, the further it keeps us from a drink. Um, and reinforces our commitment to sobriety. But the implications of this practice can go far beyond alcohol, uh, you know, recovery from alcoholism. So my therapist was talking to me about, um, and I hate, this is the worst thing about doing a take two, because I'm like, did I talk about this already in take two, or was it take one? Anyway, so my therapist, the vestibular therapist, was talking about how important it is for me to, um, while I'm doing things throughout the day, to do a little bit pause and assess how I'm feeling, assess my physical, you know, health, my symptoms for my head pain. And I thought when she said this to me, I was like, this is a step 10. You know, she just wants me to do a step 10. This is, this is exactly what I know how to do. So, um, so for people suffering from um, chronic pain or recovering from a stroke or any kind of chronic condition, this uh, pause to assess your physical and emotional state can prevent overexertion. Um, It's about, so what I was doing earlier today, and this is where I'm like, I have to apologize because now I don't know whether I said this already in this episode or if it was my pre-recording, but I was sitting down and trying to read out of the Persian cookbook and I, it was talking about roses and where roses, how, where roses came from and how they started being incorporating, um, rose water into Persian desserts. And so I got through about two paragraphs and then my head started hurting. So I would say it was probably um, maybe two minutes that I was reading and my head started hurting. And so what I would have typically done is kept reading until I finished reading what I wanted to read. And I can't do that. If I'm uh, staying on track with my vestibular therapist, then I cannot go above a five um, from zero to 10. So I had to stop at a five. And when I stopped at a five, it always keeps going. So I probably got up to about a six for my symptoms. And what I was thinking today as, cause this happened I think three times I tried to look at a book. I was looking at my the cookbook, and then one time I today I was looking at we're we're thinking about getting a new deck, so I was looking at a deck um, book <laughs> and flipping the pages. I can't do that, but I the same thing happened. I got up to a five, and and then it went past and went to a six, and. I thought, you know, I'd really like to be able to look at a book, especially because I can't, um, I can't watch TV and I can't browse the internet. It would be really nice if I could read a book. (laughs) So, so by taking spot checks 
and I'm going to talk to the vestibular therapist, but by reading, really timing myself and reading for a minute and then um, the following week reading and adding maybe 30 seconds or something like that, I'll be able to acknowledge progress um, and then be hyper aware of my body's signals and adjust my actions and my activities so that I'm not pushing myself too far. So these brief check-ins, just like I did, um, or just like I do, I should say, it's not like I, I did it for a while and then I stopped. I still do my step 10 check-ins. And by practicing this same, um, this same process and tuning into my body's needs, I can respond appropriately. And that will help me to manage my pain and foster healing, you know, and that's, that's, that's where I'm trying to get so that I can do things that bring me, you know, joy. <laughs> so these step 10 spot checks are a way of living more consciously and making small mindful decisions throughout the day that contribute to our overall well-being whether it is physically mentally emotionally or spiritually and spiritually um this you know this this step 10 spot check throughout the day is very much a spiritual thing. Like I'm looking at, am I aligned with my values today? Was my interaction with that person aligned with my values? That's a spot check. And in the same way, stroke recovery, vestibular therapy is, is what I just did Am I following the rules of my therapist? You know, am I, is, am I inhibiting my progress or am I helping my progress? And I really need to be doing that all day long. Um, so that's where I, I found this, this parallel, this incredible parallel between these two recovery situations and doing these spot checks. So whether it's recovery from alcoholism or navigating the days, months, and in my case, years after my stroke, these step 10 spot checks remind us that vigilance and self-reflection are key components. And it's these moments of introspection that enable us to live deliberately, you know, engage with people deliberately and engage with my recovery process deliberately, ensuring that we're always moving towards our highest health potential, um, both in body and mind. Our days can absolutely be more enriched by pausing and taking time to reflect, recalibrate, and renew our commitments to our well being, whatever they may be. So, thank you so much for joining me today on the Recovery Daily Podcast. Again, I apologize for whatever might have been a repetitive. I have no idea because now I have gone through the episode twice and I'm going to try to get better with this mic because it's activating. So thanks for listening. I'll talk to you tomorrow.